Hola, buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this session. My name is Lydia Hernandez Tapia. I'm a PhD candidate uh, here at the Graduate Center in Latin American, Iberian, and Latino cultures. And um, I will be introducing Juan Jose Tellez Rubio, who will give a presentation. Juan Jose Tellez Rubio was born in Algeciras in 1958. He's the author of numerous books of poems, short stories, and essays. He practices journalism in the press, radio, television, and digital publications, and he has received numerous literary and professional awards. In 1994, his book Paco de Lucia, Retrato de Familia, con guitarra, appeared. Ten years later, he published Paco de Lucia en vivo en el 2003, 2003, and in 2015, he completed his trilogy about the guitarist from Algeciras with Paco de Lucia, El Hijo de la Portuguesa. He has curated several exhibitions, such as Paco de Lucia, Así que pasen 60 años, 2007, Paco de Lucia, Fuente y Caudal, 2014, and Memories of Paco de Lucia. During Paco's life, Tellez Rubio conducted more than 20 interviews with a musician with whom he maintained a close relationship. He was consultant for the Centro de Interpretación de Camarón de la Isla in San Fernando and Cadiz, and he has participated in numerous seminars, written books, and supervised recordings with Paco de Lucia. Um, adelante, Juan José. Okay. Okay, he will be with you shortly. Thank you. ¿Quieres hacer la presentación desde aquí para las fotos? Buenas tardes. Good evening. Uh, I prefer to speak in Spanish, but uh, I'll try to speak in English. Uh, my English is uh, like Gibraltarian English. Uh, I prepared a conference for two days. Um, I, I'll try to resume the conference to 45 uh, minutes. Um, the text the, is in the paper, a complete conference. It's a recopilation of my information about Paco de Lucia and the USA. Uh, for me, uh, I think that the uh, formation of Paco, uh, it will be uh, different if uh, he doesn't can, uh, didn't come here to, uh, with uh, Jose Greco. Um, uh, live the uh, USA flamenco, the USA uh, music and the atmosphere. Uh, I think that in the USA opened the mind of Paco de Lucia. Um, oh well. I'll try to explain that. Francisco Sanchez Gomez was always deeply as sentimentally Andalusian. But the cosmopolitan dimension of Paco de Lucia will be poorly understood if we do not remember him from those long American tours or in a woven musical map of complicity, of complicities such as those of Carlos Santana, uh, who knelt before him during a concert in which he was simply supposed to be the opening act. There were also lights and shadows such as the relationship he had with Ardi Meola or his happy companionship with Chick Corea, Chiquito. <laughs> Long before, is a, a funny thing, appeared as a Mexican guitarist in the British Western Hand Cowder uh, by Bart Kennedy with uh, Racker Welsh, uh, filmed in Almeria. In that moment, 
Uh, um, the guitarist from Algeciras had already compressibly toured the United States from end to end. Pepe de Lucia, Paco's uh, singer's brother, had arrived there first in the company of Jose Greco, the Italian-American dancer who trained with La Argentinita. Uh, I arrived uh, in New York with him and I was amazed seeing those skyscrapers it took me three days without the sleep, hallucinating from the impression. I saw strange things in my head. Pepe told uh, that uh, way, but I think that Pepe always uh, saw strange things, <laughs> even now. <laughs> uh, Pepe told me uh, 30 years ago that uh, travel, a long North American tour awaited Pepe, but Paco had to continue it in Madrid. After a month, um, I told Greco in Denver, Nebraska, that if my brother did not come, I would return to Spain. He told me that it was crazy. There were already two guitarists here, Manolo Barón and Ricardo Modrego. Ricardo Modrego told Jose Manuel Gamboa how he met the young genius. Jose Greco hired Manolo Barón, Manolo Franco's uncle, and me as guitarist. Pepe came a singer. We started the tour in New York. Then Greco in the United States was Mr. Coca-Cola, who was very well known, and they offered him all the best. Paco joined us. Uh, in, in Chicago. It is now that his father forces him so that Greco also will include him. I don't know if he trained to bring Pepe here if Paco didn't go. I don't know. It could have been one of those things because with the two guitars that were going for a show, it's you know. In short, Greco accepted and Paco joined us in Chicago after a month and a half or two months. Yeah, uh, in Chicago was the snow. Father's, uh, Paco de Lucia's father also phoned uh, to Greco. Uh, and finally, Paco arrived in a snowy Chicago. And in one of the, his first performances on stage during a solo in Los Angeles, he was surprised because the audience was whistling at him. The very young guitarist told uh, he had done it wrong because in Spain they whistled out of the use and there then he discovered that it was out of enthusiasm. In the United States, said uh, Paco, the public was always very good, an effusive public that continually shows you what it feels and like others, by very polite, who does not even dare to shout. For Paco, the public is, was very important. He said that uh, uh, he, don't, uh, he, don't, he didn't want to see the public, but uh, see, uh, if there are uh, 3,000 spectators, if there is one spectator in the cells um, uh, share and the spectators are sleeping. He uh, uh, looked to the spectator who was sleeping and not the 3,000 people who are, are listening to him. Uh, his, particip his participation uh, in that tour was um, decisive for the formation of Paco. Uh, here uh, we are speaking about the formation with uh, uh, his brother Ramon de Algeciras was Niño Ricardo, and now in the tour there are uh, another uh, uh, ways to play guitar, another ways uh, to play flamenco. Uh, uh, um, on that long journey throughout the United States, Paco and Ricardo Mondrego exchanged knowledge when he came to the company, well, those things that all guitarists do in the dressing room when you pick up the guitar. Hey, I like that falsetta. I give you the falsetta. Hey, uh, what if we make him a second voice? Let's see how it turns us. 
And that's how we started, uh, said Mondrego, told Mondrego to Gamboa. The, in that moment, uh, here, uh, Stella Satania said this morning that Paco came the uh, um, concurso, uh, the contest of Jerez de la Frontera with his brother, Los Chiquitos. Uh, he, um, uh, um, for him, was the first to, tour in his life. Uh, it's very important for this. With Mondrego, Paco de Lucia recorded three albums for Philips, two flamenco guitars, 12 songs by Garcia Lorca for guitar, and 12 hits for two flamenco uh, guitar between <laughs> um, 1964 and 1965. Uh, Paco studied in the company long enough to learn that the guitarist must know how to accompany dancing and singing, but above up, uh, you must know how to accompany the dinner room, enjoy it by all those who know that talent can be a gift of nature, but that is great um, uh, with us, if not watered it by learning and passion. Pepe de Lucia tell me. Uh, for Paco, it was ever important uh, to campaign uh, the singer. Uh, he thinks that the, uh, uh, in this moment, all the um, guitarist player uh, dreams uh, with the concert, the solo concert. But for Paco, it's very important uh, his participation in the Jose Greco tour, but also in the um, with uh, Foforito, with Camarón, the company of the singer for him it was essential because Paco uh, loved profoundly uh, the sing, el cante. For Paco, uh, this tour was a radical shame. Uh, to his daughter, Casilda, in an interview published by Telva, he recounted some other details of that three, 40 years later. As I was going along, I was very scared of the transfer that I had to do in New York to connect with Chicago. But on the plane, I made friends with an American couple, and I spent the entire trip playing guitar for them. Uh, ever the, this couple uh, accompanied Paco to the terminal, and uh, he uh, ever uh, uh, speak about this. This thing after, in the uh, second tour with Jose Greco, uh, because Pepe de Lucia is not with him, uh, uh, Antonio uh, said to Rafael El Negro, uh, 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 to uh, her uh, wife, Matilde Coral, who uh, looked for Paco and attends Paco in, um, uh, like, a, I don't know in English, uh, tutor, uh, tutor. Uh, uh, <laughs> Francisco uh, Sanchez Gomez was shabby at that time, hence his neck-neck mambrú, which was a shabby doll that appeared of the label of some Portuguese chocolate that uh, from time to time his maternal family sent him. Uh, ever in the family has a nickname. Uh, Pepe de Lucia was El Pelleja, uh, because he has uh, ever a um, Cartier, uh, I think Cartier, uh, a Bach, uh, um, leader Bach with, for the money, uh, uh, the name in Spain, El Pelleja, and Paco Mambrú. Uh, Paquito Sánchez Gómez arrived in Chicago. It was the last, the last days of 1962, of the, or the first of 63. They had claimed him through the United States Consulate and he had to be taken to the airport by his father and the police because he was not all and out to board alone. For me, he said, going to the United States was ex exciting as going to the moon. Yeah. With, Greco, with Greco, he embarked on two tours. The first lasting nine months, and the second in 1966, in which people no longer accompanied him, uh, adding two years between them, between the Kennedy and Johnson presidency. His roadmap not only included North America, 
but also Europe, Africa, the Philippines, and Australia at a rate of $100 per week, which he religiously sent home to his family. The father of Paco, the Paco of Antonio, uh, was the patriarch. And uh, all, the, uh, um, all the children sent to him the money, and uh, he distributed the money uh, <laughs> in uh, some time when Paco bring to the uh, family home with uh, a million of pesetas, or um, a half million pesetas, uh, the father uh, uh, asked for Paco, um, are you going to, to go to the uh, discotheque or, and Paco says, set, uh, yes, yes. Um, and then Antonio, and give him uh, 500 pesetas, <laughs> 200. <laughs> Ramón de Arrecira and buy a, a clock, a, a watch uh, uh, in Morocco tour with Juanito Barderrama, and his question was ever, uh, how can I say that to my father? The father, don't, uh, uh, it, uh, the father Antonio, he was uh, very poor when uh, he was uh, children. Uh, he liked a lot the, the money to, uh, to quiet the family. Uh, well, uh, with Greco, uh, uh, Pepe de Lucia bought a Leica. With, uh, he photographed the fragment of that uh, tree. Uh, I see uh, something. Uh, no. No. That. Uh, it's the same, there's a, a page of the New York Times with a, a critic to uh, um, a concert of Paco de Lucia here in New York. For him, the, the, uh, the first critic here in New York uh, was essential because he said that um, he, uh, he liked the critical uh, article, who knows uh, what uh, it writing what is saying. Uh, he does. He didn't like the easy critic, uh, the personal critic, without uh, Jewish elements. Uh, he uh, prefer that bad critic, that the uh, uh, good critic without fundam fundamentation. That Paco with uh, here uh, in San Francisco, uh, uh, what the photograph was Pepe de Lucia. Here Paco in Berkeley, and uh, uh, Dr. Honoris uh, Causa uh, in Berkeley, the second Honoris Causa for Paco, the first was in, in Katy, uh, Paco and René Heredia in the hippie years. <laughs> uh, that, that photograph we see um, uh, this morning, uh, the front page from uh, guitar player with Aldi Meola and uh, McLaughlin in the uh, first tour. Paco singing and Pepe playing the guitar. The father um, uh, teach to uh, to uh, the uh, the um, his uh, children, but not uh, his daughter Maria, uh, because his father thinks that the women cannot play the guitar because uh, it's a problem with the um, uh, <laughs> and the uh, strong of the uh, of the fingers. Uh, Maria, when uh, he was yeah, uh, a lot of years uh, in the in the 17, said uh, to his father, 
uh, you don't, uh, you didn't teach to me, you must teach my uh, song. Uh, her song is Jose Mari Bandera, uh, the guitarist who accompanies Paco in a lot of tours, and he came here last February in the homage to, to Paco. This is an interchange in the, the uh, Pepe play the guitar and Paco is uh, singing. Uh, Paco said uh, that he, uh, he wants uh, to be singer, but he was uh, um, timid. Which are, which are, and she, he, um, hidden uh, uh, behind the guitar. Uh, Pepe, uh, Pepe now to, to, to play the guitar. He, uh, um, when his father want to teach him to play the guitar, uh, he um, uh, um, claimed for money. Uh, Pepe said to his father, Mm, give me money, and I... <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a, a passport of Paco, in, uh, I think in 1966. <laughs> That's the Lakers for, for the photograph. Uh, Pepe is looking Paco, uh, um, seeing the, the Lakers. Fifty years ago, <laughs> Frisco, Golden Gate. Well, here uh, Curros, uh, the son of Paco de Lucia, said that he uh, seems Marlon Brando. Yeah. <laughs> Pagan Sabica. Pagan Sabica eating muffin. It's very important the, the food for, uh, for Paco. Not only the paella with Mario Escudero. This is in Chicago. This is in, in Las Vegas. Pepe uh, told me that in Las Vegas, uh, he, uh, he got it, the Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and gave him uh, coins, dimes, to play with the machines oh. in, the, in the casino. Another pose of Paco with Carlos Santana. Paco uh, played with Carlos Santana in in Barcelona in, in the early 70s, and the Chronicle, in the, in the conference, we can read the, the Chronicle of uh, Angel Casas of that concert. Uh, for the public, for, uh, was, it was a, re a revelation. All the public uh, wait for uh, Carlos Santana, but the um, uh, apparition of um, Paco de Lucia was a miracle for the people. Carlos Santana uh, said when Paco died that he, he was made of Palo Santo in guitar. Uh, Carlos Santana admired a lot uh, Paco. <laughs> With the trio, El Granados Café, uh, this morning, uh, I think that uh, we, uh, uh, you can see the, the menu of the Café Granados. Uh, it was the, the place uh, to meet the flamencos in, in New York in that uh, year. Uh, and Paco came to him, to, uh, to there. Paco in the Carnegie Hall in 27. Uh, but um, Lucia said to me that uh, he, uh, he came back to Carnegie Hall in 2011 with a family, a uh, North American family whose Paco uh, was a close relationship. And that's the, the first photo. 
Hoy sabía Mario y Pedro. Bueno, for Paco, the tours are important also for a question that uh, for me also is important to know the English. Uh, Paco now uh, English because his father teach him not uh, only the guitar but also uh, English and French in Algeciras. But for, um, it was a, 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 a relative um, uh, way to speak English, both uh, very bad, like me. Uh, uh, he, in the uh, tour, uh, uh, he uh, has uh, also opportunity uh, to Uh, for a best English to explain his own music. When uh, um, Ardi Meola was questioned um, for uh, the knowledge of Paco was from him, Di Meola said that his uh, music, uh, a, a sense of the music, very uh, interesting, uh, very interesting, but when he asked, and what, uh, you, uh, um, what, Uh, our teach to Paco, uh, or the Meola said, English. Uh, uh, for Paco, it's very important, was very important to uh, speak in English. Uh, he gets to speak English here and in Australia. There is an interview uh, very young in Australia speaking English, and um, it's very uh, good accent. Uh, there is a lot of American influence in the pack of music. It was the Brazilian music very early. Uh, his friend, Jose Luis Marin, uh, aficionado, not fan, aficionado um, to flamenco, he teach him um, the, the knowledge uh, of uh, Baden Powell uh, and another uh, Brazilian music and also uh, something important. There is a, a controversy around the Entre Dos Aguas and the uh, Te Estoy Amando Locamente uh, de Las Grecas. Uh, Entre Dos Aguas was composed in 1972 and Te Estoy Amando Locamente appears at um, 1974. Uh, but Uh, Entre Dos Aguas was composed by Paco de Lucía. Te estoy llamando locamente, was composed by uh, uh, Felipe Campuzano. Paco and Felipe are friends, uh, very close friends in that time. And ever people said, well, what the first, the, the melody of the uh, initial of Entre Dos Aguas or Te estoy llamando locamente. José Luis Marín teach to Paco when he was uh, very young uh, an old standard of the American music, uh, Fly Me to the Moon. Yeah. If you uh, pulse uh, to time uh, the harmony of Fly Me to the Moon, the result is Entre Dos Aguas, or is uh, um, Te Estoy Llamando Locamente. Is the, the, the same uh, harmonization. <clears throat> It was important also for the decouvrement of Savica. Uh, Ricardo Modrego, uh, for example, claims that Paco's discovery by Savica occurred during that first tour with Greco following a flamenco meeting at the Granados restaurant. Gamboa, who collects this information, points out that perhaps it was actually the Granados restaurant, better Gra Granados Cafe at um, 125 McDougall Street, a flamenco stop in the heart of Greenwich Village. Sabica, Modrigo Recall, was with the wardrobe lady, an Asturian woman, Diego Saba's brother. Also came. They serve us some New York style tapas and come on, let's get out the guitars. Paco played and Sabika said to himself, What is this? 
His face has already changed because the one who was most popular at that time, the one who had fame, was Pepito, who sang, Pepito de Lucia, who sang like angel. He sang like an old man. And that touched Sabicas a lot. But when he saw Paco, he, had, he was very impressed. It was then that Paco began to speak broken English, rudiments that were passed on to him by the, his father in Algecira, and which he perfected later. In the letters to uh, their family, uh, you can read uh, anything about that, uh, he speaks uh, about the, the English. Um, he sent letters to his family from uh, around the tour, from Alabama to Jacksonville, from Daytona Beach to Fredonia or Tampa, Florida. It then he tells how El Greco, that was he called him like the painter, uh, paid them religiously even on the days when there was no performance. The money until he became independent after his wedding was managed by his father. However, he never liked to spend or lend in one of the first interviews he, had, he gave, he claimed that money only interests him in how much I need it to eat and dress. Do you earn a lot? Let's say that I am better paid than a brick layer in Spain, but no much more. On the first American tour, Paco and Pepe bought several pounds so that he could make in his own food in the hotel. Paco de Lucia's first solo performance in the United States would um, take place on an indeterminate date in those, in those years as the Guitar Society in New York. But the uh, United States had other surprises in store for him. There, he said, I discovered Sabicas and Mario Escudero because in Spain at that time we loved Nino Ricardo, who was the guitarist who took all entire generation. He was a bit like everyone's teacher, Sabica and Escudero, were hardly now here. Not until later did the albums they recorded in America begin to arrive. I saw in Sabicas a new way of playing something new. Uh, I speak about the, the register of Sabica and, and um, Mario Escudero, for Paco was very important. Impetu of Mario Escudero, uh, no, not only Sabicas in, the, in that time. Uh, uh, probably Manuel Cano, the Granadian guitar, uh, guitar uh, uh, spoke to uh, Paco's father about uh, uh, Sabicas. Uh, uh, he knows that he's a, a, a bigger guitarist in that time. Uh, do you know that the, the, the recording uh, and the play recording is both uh, very unusual in, the, uh, in Spain in that years. Uh, the, uh, the, the music, uh, listen the music in the concert or uh, by the radio. But it's very difficult to, to have uh, vinilos uh, at home because it, uh, they are not uh, uh, record player in that time. We are from the big banky hotel between 5th North and 33rd in Birmingham, Alabama. The young Paco de Lucia, now um, uh, 19 years old, uh, draw his pen to tell impression on his family on March uh, 3, year 66. It's a long, uh, any more of the letter of Paco de Lucia from his family. Another thing, uh, only five minutes for the three days conference. Uh, I think that uh, it's very important for, uh, for Paco the uh, knowledge of the jazz uh, because he, uh, for him 
the jazz had an harmonization and a sense of improvisation very different of flamenco. When he uh, began to, uh, with Pedro Iturralde, was a melting pot. Uh, uh, Pedro uh, played the, uh, the, her, his music and Paco his uh, guitar, but separated. When he, uh, he began to, to, to the tour with John McLaughlin and Adi Meola with Larry Correa, he had uh, very uh, difficulties. Uh, to know what the improvisation of jazz around a, a standard uh, classic. When he uh, knows um, the sense of improvisation, uh, change. And that sense of improvisation <clears throat> who came from the jazz, Paco uh, translate to the improvisation as flamenco and different. Uh, and the sextet of Paco, it was also a just formation. It's the same thing, and probably uh, uh, was the, the replication in flamenco of Return Forever, the Chick Corea, the formation, the music formation of Chick Corea and Paco was um, very similar. Uh, 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 last question. <coughs> Paco doesn't like the rock and roll. Uh, he likes uh, 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 music from rock and roll, but he said that in rock and roll it was very easy, el camelo. Uh, I don't know how uh, in English, uh, la mentira, el engaño. Yeah, like to mm, well, uh, 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 fake. Uh, in, in, in rock, it, it's more easy the, the fake. And he had a, a, a distance from rock. Uh, only, uh, I remember, uh, he recorded with a rock uh, musician, was Brian Adams for uh, the, the uh, film um, uh, San Juan de Marco. Uh, it was uh, recorded in Jamaica, and Paco uh, resist the, the offer to, to uh, record it with Brian Adam, even he uh, claimed for a lot of uh, money, uh, thinking that they um, was, no, 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 it was yes, uh, a lot of money for her holidays, for his holidays, but was the only incursion of Paco in the way of the rock and roll, or similar to rock and roll. And he hates Omar Lieber. Uh, the, the music, the North American music, not, not for Omar Lieber. Uh, even he, he said that the music of Omar Lieber said uh, flamenco, and the, no flamenco music in Omar Lieber. It was a meeting in an airport who Paco uh, said to Omar Lieber, uh, who's thinking about, around uh, this question, and what Omar Lieber was sat in that, in that moment. Uh, thank you very much. I had no more time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you for that incredible presentation. We have, we have questions at the end. OK, we have a break, 10 minute break now for coffee. And we'll see you back in 10 minutes. Gracias.